What is the first thing I do when I take out my William Optics Gran Turismo 81? Well, because it is a William Optics, the first thing I'm going to do with it every single time that I take it out, I'm going to look at it for a long time. Because it's so pretty. I don't know why I'm weird. Angus Wong here and um, in tonight's video I'm actually going to give you my first impressions of my own William Optics Gran Turismo 81. Um, you've probably seen this in the background of one of my videos or one of my random pictures is that I've actually had this for a long time. I've had it since December or maybe even January but you know as soon as I got it um, I just didn't have a t uh, have the chance to image with it because I think by the time I got it in January, I was already working on... Hello? Um, I think there's a monster behind me. Um, all right. Um, this may be my last video ever. Okay, um, so I'm still alive. Um, the monster hasn't gotten to me yet. Although I am keeping my eye out for it. Um, like I was saying, um, I have actually had this for a while. Uh, back in January, February, I was already working on several different projects and I just didn't have the time to use the uh, Gran Turismo 81. Um, and then after that, it was a galaxy season. And with galaxy season, uh, number one, it doesn't apply to San Francisco because all we got was cloud and fog. Number two, uh, for galaxies, you need a lot of focal length, which this does not have. Um, this is really built for uh, larger nebulae, and I'll go over some of the specs. Um, but I think with this coming fall and winter, I'm going to make a lot of use out of this. So that's why I want to do a first impression video uh, right now, and then obviously follow that up with more of a um, long-term review. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it because um, I think everybody should have an should have an 80 millimeter refractor in their library of uh, of telescope because I think uh, with an 80 millimeter refractor uh, you're going to be in that sweet spot for a lot of the emission nebulae uh, that will be coming up during the winter season. So I'm going to quickly go over the specs. This is, as I mentioned, an 81 millimeter refractor. Uh, this is a triplet design using FPL 53 glass. Um, I think it's one, I think it's one FPL 53 and then uh, maybe like another one or two of FPL 51. But either way, um, this should give you amazing color corrections, um, being a triplet design after all. Um, and then this is a uh, F 5.9 focal ratio. So when you multiply the, uh, the focal ratio plus um, by the um, aperture, you get around 400, 478 millimeters of focal length. 
and in that range around 500 millimeters of focal length uh, the monster is sharpening its claws um, okay um, I'm gonna make this quick because I fear for my life oh it's not a monster it's just a cat hey buddy that's uh that's my neighbor's cat I don't know if you guys can see it and it's ignoring me even though it's my backyard hey buddy there you go um, all right I'm gonna play with the cat for a little while y'all stay put Hey buddy. Hey. How have you been? Oh, I haven't seen you in a while. You know, in the coming months, you and I are gonna spend a whole lot of time out here. Looking forward to it. I'm just waiting for clear skies to come back. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, buddy. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> yes, that's my tarp. And thank you for marking it. so adorable <laughs> oh I miss having a cat okay so playtime with the cat got out of hand and then it got kind of dark and also got kind of cold so I'm gonna make this quake and go inside and layer up but as I was saying I think that everybody should own a 80 millimeter refractor because I think that the focal length that it will afford you it's so well suited for the winter season that is coming up in the northern hemisphere uh, you're gonna find a lot of the winter uh, emission nebulae to be right in the wheelhouse of say 400 to 500 millimeters of focal length which um, as I said if you do the math uh, this will come in at around 478 millimeters of focal length so it's really perfect for uh, the upcoming winter season and I'm looking forward to using uh, my William Octave's Gran Turismo 81 for a long time and now I'm gonna go inside and layer up because I'm freezing so the plan tonight, um, it's um, nothing too crazy. Uh, I just want to be able to demonstrate, you know, how awesome this uh, William Maltek's Grand Tourism 81 is. And at this time of the year, and with that giant tree still in my way, uh, the only real target that I can image right now would be up at Cygnus. So um, I'm going to be pointing it up there uh, once again tonight. Um, but the target that I'm going to choose, I think, um, with this telescope, I'm going to pick the Pelican Nebula and also because I'm still using my uh, Canon 60D DSLR and, and I will be using it with my Opton L Extreme to get all of that hydrogen alpha and a little bit of that oxygen 3 and also it, it's a good filter to block out the moon because the moon will be coming out uh, sometime past midnight tonight. Um, so that is a decent filter to use when you have to deal with the moon. Of course, it's best to not image under the moonlight, but uh, I don't care. I've been deprived for the last four months. I'm going to image unless it rains. So to actually help me deal with, um, you know, 
the long exposure using a common DSLR because you know once you crank up the exposure time you're also going to deal with heat related noises I'm actually going to use a uh, field flattener slash focal reducer what this is going to do is going to uh, lower the focal length from the original 478 to I think well, what's whatever 478 times 8 times 0.8 is, I think it's around like 380 millimeters focal length. Um, so I'm going to lose a little bit of the reach, but the flip side is that, and the reason why I'm doing this is because now I have a system that is the original F5.9 times the 0.8 focal reducer, which gives me a focal ratio of about 4.7 so this entire system becomes a uh, 4.7 optical system and that's really going to help lower the exposure time that I need uh, and help my DSLR to sort of deal with that heat related noise because it is actually I said earlier that I was getting cold but it is a relatively warm night um, it's about 60 degrees Fahrenheit that's pretty warm for a DSLR for, especially when you're dealing with long exposures. I hate the summer nights because when I'm out here, I'm just being feasted on by mosquitoes. Um, and I don't even think San Francisco is known for mosquitoes, but I've been out here for less than half an hour. And of all spots, they got me right next to my eye right nearby, nearby my temple, which is probably the most annoying spot ever. So I'm covering up. Anyways, um, before I actually start the imaging session, I want to quickly show you guys why I think, you know, an 80 millimeter uh, refractor, and especially the GT81 with this triplet apochromatic um, FPL53 glass, it's going to look really awesome uh, whenever you uh, point it up in a nice sky. And I'm going to show you a target, the Pelican Nebula that I'm going to image tonight and how it's going to frame up. So I'm going to do this. And then in the Stellarium, I already have GT81 selected. It already has my focal length. Now remember, I'm not going to be using the one-to-one -one field flattener because I want to uh, lower the focal ratio so that I don't need too long of an exposure time. So I'm actually going to select this 0.8, um, which is something that I enter myself. You can do that for yourself as well. Um, and this is how it's going to frame up. Um, it is, this is about 380 millimeter of uh, focal length. And I think that's going to look really nice. I'm going to capture the entirety of the bird looking thing and a little bit of, you know, this extra nebulosity over here, which I think will look pretty cool. Um, and it looks like I'm going to get a little bit of the North America um, nebula as well. Eh, I don't care. My, my main focus here is um, the Pelican Nebula. And let's see, I'm going to try to frame it up against the edge. Well, I don't know yet. You'll see how I frame up at the, when I show you the final picture. Oh, before I forget to mention, uh, as with all William Optics uh, refractor, you get this um, bath knob mask that is designed specifically for your refractor. And I cannot tell you how handy this is when it comes to focusing. Um, I was just able to find uh, pin sharp focus, uh, using the bath knob mask and I don't have to second guess myself on whether or not is this star just as small as, as, as it gets. Uh, no, but with a, with a bath knob mask, you see the, uh, the spikes or, you know, so I like to call them uh, kitty's whiskers, then you know that you are uh, in focus. And that's super handy. That's one of the main advantages of uh, getting a William Optics uh, refractor. All right, so a lot of times when you finally get your session going and your your camera is taking pictures, it's almost as if you, it's almost as if you won a battle. And this was the case tonight. Um, maybe I'm just not used to setting up again because it's been so many months. But um, 
I'm losing my touch. I'm losing my touch. But I'm, I'm hoping that with more time and more practice, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel like I'm going on automatic by the time, uh, you know, all the winter constellations are available to me in about two months time. But anyways, so my plan for using the focal reducer worked because uh, I'm now taking three minutes uh, exposure at ISO 3200 on my Canon. And that's about as high of an exposure as I'm willing to go um, just to try to keep some of that noise down. But yeah, I think that, you know, the image will turn out pretty good. And if I remember correctly, Pelican will set behind the rooftop of my house at around 3.30 a.m. And that's when I will come back out here to uh, take my darts. I'm not gonna film that because it's 3 a.m. I, I don't wanna wake people up. I don't wanna be talking in, in the yard. Um, but yeah, I hope you found this video useful. Um, if you're in the market for an 80 millimeter refractor, uh, really consider the William Optics Gran Turismo 81. Uh, the triplet design, the FPL 53, um, and you know, like the way I started this, this video, the the look and appeal of it, it's, there, there's something about William Optics that really just calls out to me. And I hope that uh, it calls out to you as well. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. Um, and as always, I wish you all good health and clear skies, everyone. Take care.